First World War, started in 1914, in Europe. Germany, Austria Hungary, Bulgaria, and Ottomans, on one side. British Empire, France, Italy, Russia, Serbia, and Japan, on the other side. USA, was neutral, at the start of the war. On April 6, 1917, USA, decided to enter the war, at Entente side. But what if United States had joined the Central Powers, instead of Entente? For a long time, the United States was sympathetic to both sides. There really wasn't a clear-cut bad side, or good side. USA President Wilson, wasn't exactly fond of the German Kaiser. But he wasn't fond of many world leaders. The Germans sank Lusitania, on May 7, 1915, killing 128 Americans. But that Lusitania was a British navy, carrying munitions in a war zone, using American passengers as human shields. The main goal of USA, since 1900, was to become the first world power, in the place of the British Empire. What if USA leaders decide, that Germany is the wrong enemy? June. 28, 1914, Sarajevo. Serbs kill Franz Ferdinand of Austria, heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne. July 28, 1914, Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia. Russia mobilizes. August 1, 1914, Germany declares war on Russia, France, and Belgium. August 4, the United Kingdom declares war on Germany. August 25, Japan declares war on Germany. World War I, start. At the start of the war, British Navy begins a naval blockade against Central Powers. American corporations want to sell weapons and other material to both sides. But USA ships are constantly stopped by the British Royal Navy. November 1, 1914, the Ottoman Empire enters the war. September 1914, Battle of the Marne. The Western Front become entrenched in France. British interdicts shipments even to neutral nations, like the Netherlands and Denmark. American protests are futile. Britain is the world superpower, at the time. May 1915, Italy declare war on Austria. War continues in 1916. Trench warfare, soldiers fight from dug-in positions, striking at each other with machine guns, artillery, and chemical weapons. Neither side has any substantive success. The British naval blockade continues. Romania and Greece enter the war. Ireland, April 1916, insurrection to end British rule. 485 people are killed. USA has a large Irish anti-British and German population. Sectors of American public opinion become definitely hostile to the Entente. USA nationalistic newspapers fuel anti-British feelings by highlighting the parallels with the War of 1812, and reports that, in Germany, thousand civilians are starving for the illegal British blockade. November 1916, German Chancellor Bateman Hallweg ordered do not resume unrestricted submarine warfare realizing USA may enter a war at their side. December 1, 1916, Wilson asked to the Congress to adopt an aggressive stance of armed neutrality in enforcing freedom of the seas. A breakdown in relations is the result. 19th of December. The United States of America mobilizes. 
December 20, 1916, Wilson ordered to escort ships, taking American exports to Sweden and the Netherlands, which could be re-exported to Germany. And things get worse from now. A good number of Canadian troops return at home. Without Canadians, Allies opt to concentrate on a mostly defensive doctrine. January 16, 1917, the German foreign minister, in the Zimmermann telegram, invite USA to join the war, as Germany's ally, offering Canada. Some British leaders see the danger of a coming clash with the USA. But military sectors of Entente, believe the blockade is the decisive way to win the war. They gamble that an airtight blockade may bring the Central Powers to their knees before an irate America can do anything worthwhile. 2nd of April, off the coast of Ireland, USA destroyer Cassin, while it was escorting merchant ships, is sunk. USA issue a note of protest to the British government, asking to immediately suspend the unrestricted naval blockade. David Lloyd George, British Prime Minister, refuses. April 6, 1917, USA enter the war. As Germany's ally. April 7, 1917, first clash, along the USA-Canadian border. The USA 26th Infantry Division, attacks at Pembina. Small naval battles in the Atlantic, between British and American fleets. USA destroyers Fanning, is sunk off the Newfoundland coast. Alaska, frontier skirmishing and grading, conducted by both sides. English ships shell coastal city, on the east coast of the United States. There is an attempt by British Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour to make a peace proposal. But the USA dismiss it out of hand because of its essentially calling for a return to pre-war situation. May 8, 1917, American invasion of Canada starts. Four main fronts. The Pacific Northwest border between Seattle and Vancouver. North Dakota and Minnesota, up to Winnipeg, and Thunder Bay. The Toronto-Buffalo-Detroit Triangle. The eastern border, the main front. It defends Canada's largest cities, and the access to the Atlantic. USA Army, rapidly takes Vancouver. Canadian defenses at Winnipeg are overwhelmed. The Canadians retreat to the north. But, in the east, Canadians held the line. They retreat behind St. Lawrence River. The St. Lawrence is more than one kilometer wide in most places, wider than the German Rhine. The English has sent as many troops to Ontario and Quebec to counter the American war machine. And they are battled hardened troops. They fought at New Chapelle, Ypres, Somme. In 1917, USA is not ready for war. No heavy weapons, no tanks, no logistics. Even Bulgaria had a bigger army than the USA did. USA can land troops in Europe to help Germans. It's impossible to break the British blockade of the North Sea. The American Navy is not a match for the British Navy. And the French, the Italians, and the Japanese have a fleet too. It took three years to build a battleship, so the opportunity for the USA to hugely increase the fleet during the span of World War I is low. But the American entry in the war give to German troops the desperately needed morale. It's in Europe that the war will be won, or lost. May 9, Europe. Allied naval offensive ends in disaster for the Allied Army. 
25th of May, 1917, Japanese and Australian troops start the invasion of Philippines. In the Atlantic, USA Navy refuses an open fight with Royal Navy. 100 years ago, Royal Navy enjoyed a position the USA Navy enjoys today. It could have literally taken on the entire world, and still possibly won on the seas. July 31st, France. The Battle of Passchendaele begins. August 10th, Canadian Front. British and Canadians, under the command of General Sir Arthur W. Curry, launch an offensive, retaking some ground in Montreal. 15th of August, 1917. Naval bombing of Boston, the worst naval bombing of the war. No trench warfare in the Canadian Western Front. This front is many times longer than the entire European Western Front. Too big for a static line of fortifications to build, like the Russian Front. But in the east, there are trenches. October 24, Italian Front, Battle of Capretto. The Austro-Hungarians break through the Italian lines. Italians halt the offensive on the Piave River. Stalemate in France. Without USA support, Allies do not have the strength to launch offensives. And Germans are occupied in the east. November 7, Russia, the Bolshevik seize power. December 16, 1917. At Brest-Litovsk, Russia signs an armistice with Germany. A millions of German soldiers are now free for use in France. December 20th, Japanese and British forces invades Hawaii. War in Canada continues. British launch gas attacks at Americans. At the time, gas was a normal weapon, like artillery. But during Christmas 1917, there is a series of unofficial ceasefires. American and Canadian soldiers cross trenches to exchange seasonal greetings and talk. January 1918, the British still dominate the Atlantic. USA can't send soldiers in Europe. But they do not need to do it to win the war. They do not need to control the seas. They merely have to deny Britain the use of it. British Navy, now, can't just sit in the North Sea and wait for the Germans to finally do something. Not when there are the Americans all over the Atlantic, hitting their convoys. British are forced to weaken the North Sea Fleet to neutralize the American threat. German fleet is able to start sortie and harass shipments to the British Isles. Germany alone came very close to starve the British. With American help, they would have succeeded. Great Britain is reliant on food imports. American attack cut the supplies. The Entente supply of shells is cut in half. The American submarine force is made up of L-class and K-class coastal craft, plagued by constant problems, they are almost useless. But German U-boots are now able to resupply from the western side of the Atlantic. With the USA as a safe base, they are even more lethal. Britain is not threatened, but it starts to starve. February 1918, Canadian Front. The United States, after the passage of the Selective Service Act, draft 2 million and 800,000 men. And another 3 million will be available in the next months. Canada's armed forces are small, compared to the USA. Allies are stretched very thin already, and they are not able to defend Canada with any ability, unless they give up on Europe. February 5, 1918. Marines cross the St. Lawrence River, near Terroir Riviere. Ernest Hemingway fights in this battle. 
In the West, U.S. forces are able to go around the defenses. One third of the Canadian border is not covered. 1st of March, the 1st USA Army of Pershing takes Toronto. Montreal surrenders. Brithis move to Nova Scotia and use that as a base. It can be defended by their superior naval power. But Canadian campaign is lost. European front, without pressure, Germany have time to integrate and exploit the resources of the, the harvests of Poland and Ukraine. The Allies know that they could not win a protracted war, with American war machines starting to warm up. The Allies decide a final quick offensive, code name, 100 Days Operation. March 21, 1918, British attack near St. Quentin achieved an unprecedented advance of 60 kilometers. After heavy fighting, however, the offensive is halted. There is the problem of resupply troops. The terrain is shell-torn, and often impassable to traffic. 10th of April, Italians obtain a succès at Vittorio Veneto. But Austrian morale is high. Austrian orderly retreat to the Tagliamenta River, organizing a defensive line. In this front, made of high mountains and many river, it's difficult to obtain a decisive victory. 15th of July, Allies launch another offensive, in an attempt to encircle Leo. But they lack one million of Canadian and Australian soldiers, impugnate in their countries. The Germans halt the drive, and counterattack. By 20th of July, the Allies has retreated to their starting lines. Allied casualties, between March and April 1918, are 270,000 men. Anti-war marches became frequent, and morale in the Allied army fell. French units are on the verge of open mutiny. Revolts in India. Allies knows there is no more hope of winning. It is evident that, in the long run, USA will shift the balance of power in favor of the Central Powers. August 24, 1918. Allies ask for an armistice. The Great War is over. The peace treaty is signed at Versailles. Wilson and German Kaiser meet here for the first time. The peace treaty will be more fair than the treaty in our reality. Germany gains Luxembourg, gets back its colonies, and Brest-Levotsk treaty confirmed. Ukraine, Baltic Duchy, Finland, Caucasus, and Kingdom of Poland are now client state of the Germans. Germany also gains the Belgium Congo, and some French colonies in the Congo region. USA gains Martinique, Bahamas, and most of French Polynesia. No way America is going to allow a potentially hostile, Anglophile, independent Canada on its northern border. Quebec gets some sort of independence. Newfoundland, Labrador, and Yukon plebiscite to join USA as new states. Canada have a Puerto Rico-like confederal status. Ireland is independent. Indemnity to USA and Germany for a legal blockade. France army size restrictions and admits to waging aggressive war. Italy have to pay reparations to Austria. But, probably, they will never get paid. Austria-Hungary will dissolve, some years after the war. This is what, in my opinion, would have happened in case of USA joining the Central Powers. I know it's quite difficult that USA could fight Britain and France, but for sure it's not impossible.
and I think that uh, if all our grandparents uh, could see what the world, uh, and particularly Western Europe, uh, has become today, they would have fought uh, with the Germans uh, in both uh, wars. Thank you for watching.